Hello, YouTube. Another day and another high. The S&P not just back-to-back -back green days. So the question is, how much more is there in the tank? If we do drop on CPI tomorrow, where is support? So we're going to go through all of that today, but we're really going to focus on higher highs. And I'm talking about a lot of charts in terms of RSP, DIA, and lots of others you might not have noticed. We'll look at those in a moment. But First thing we want to focus on here is going to be our seasonality chart that we've laid out for a number of videos now, that if we continue to rock this uptrend and continue to go higher and notably a higher monthly high or getting over this yellow box and birthing the bull, I think we can go even higher. And I know people don't believe it. Yes, volume's dropping off. But when we look at weekly charts in a moment, I think you might be really surprised. So if you think this is a sucker's rally, please make sure to drop me a comment because I don't particularly care whether people trust or believe this rally. The fact is, trading the trend is what makes you money. So when we look here to our seasonality chart in the uptrend, all it means is that if we continue to trend up, where are we likely going to go? Higher. So let's remind ourselves of where we started versus where we are. We had our bear market downtrend. What did we do? Well, we broke it and we back test and passed it. That came right here. We broke over it, back tested once, bear trapped twice, and then we bounced off. And because we are pointing up and objects in motion tend to stay in motion, as long as we stay over this one day uptrend or this green line, it's like really simple. We're probably gonna keep going higher. So for tomorrow, if we're gonna lose this uptrend, we have to be below about 405 or print a weekly lower low. So that's really easy for us to pay attention to here. So let's get all the news out of the way and then let's look at some charts. I'm gonna ask you for a huge favor, please and thank you though. If you could consider smashing that thumbs up and subscribing to the channel if you're enjoying the content, that would be greatly appreciated. And then we'll thank you ahead of time for joining our YouTube community. So seasonality chart, we talked about that it's playing out. People don't believe it, which is great. Why? Because there is fuel in the tank for us to keep going up. It is this bare fuel. And this will be important as we circle back on the weekly charts. I'll actually just preview it right now. So let's have a look here at S&P on the weekly chart. Hearing a lot of bears saying there's no volume. Well, where are you guys looking? You're looking on a five-minute chart. You're looking on a one-hour chart. Look at this volume. It is the biggest green bar we've had going back to January of 2022. This is the biggest weekly bar we have had in more than 12 months. I would consider that pretty big. Why? Well, because we got a gap down pump up and we are up by about, uh, call it 30 points off. Sorry, uh, 380. Yeah, that's 30 points. We're up 30 points off the low. Gap down pump up. People shorted it. And then they shorted the top. So this doesn't look all that great. So this is called a reluctant rally, a wall of worry. Why? Well, because they shorted at 380. They shorted the hell out of it. And now we're 30 points higher. So they add on a whole bunch more here. That's that sunk cost fallacy we talked about yesterday. So for me, it doesn't take a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of extra volume for us to go higher because the coil is getting tight. As a coil gets tight, it usually explodes. So volume drops off, price action starts to consolidate, which means we're going sideways on lower volume. Why? Well, because there's a whole bunch of buyers sitting on the sidelines which want to exit their short position. So uh, going sideways is actually bullish. It's a pop in a flag. And... With CPI tomorrow and FOMC meeting minutes in the afternoon, the market is definitely going to break that coil and explode. I'm just not sure which way. I have a suspicion it's going to be higher. I'm prepared if it goes down, though. And when we look at the charts in a little uh, in a few minutes here, I think you might be really surprised. So please make sure to stay tuned all the way till the end. Here's a couple of headlines from today. Feds Williams, one more rate hike is a reasonable starting place, but we will be driven by the data. So what does that mean? Pay close attention to tomorrow. This guy is the second most important person at the Fed now that Lael Brainerd has stepped down and he is part of the Troika. He is the New York uh, Fed president. Another headline here from Williams. If inflation falls, we will have to lower interest rates. Oh my goodness. So let's make sure we pay very close attention to, attention to tomorrow, which we've already talked about a lot. We're in greed here. So what is that? That is fear for the bears. That is fear for the shorts. And man, these guys are short. It is getting painful. And I would assume they just want to get out. So if we can continue to go higher, this is where it could really start to push up. The market's, market's going sideways, but from a week ago till today, people are adding on the risk. And we saw Bitcoin absolutely tear today. It blew through what area? I think it got through 30,500. 30,584. We're up by 6% in the, on the week or 80% year to date. That is incredible. That is a risk on rally. Dollars down by half a percent, roughly. And we see that gold is up. Bitcoin is up. we got that Shanghai upgrade coming for Ethereum uh, a little bit later as well. Looking here to the heat map, 
it's mostly big tech, which is not going anywhere. And that's actually bullish. Why? Well, because we're seeing breadth and depth with, uh, with earnings coming up this week from a lot of different sectors. If we now look at week to date, ah, the ones that are red today and in the last week are the ones that have been driving the market higher for the last week. So this is like a really easy way for us to look at it. And we can know tech is down, Apple, NVIDIA, Amazon, Microsoft, some uh, product manufacturers forecasting a recession like Caterpill Caterpillar and Deer. But if we look at this one day, it's like not that bad. So if it's not all that bad, let's actually look at the four hour here. So nothing really happened in the afternoon. Most of the gains happened in the morning. All right. So now let's look here at some charts because I think that a little bit of perspective is going to really go a long way here. We're going to focus on ETFs on the weekly chart. So on the weekend video, we talked about how we were at a turning point for RSP or equal weight S&P 500. What are we? We're up by 1.26% on the week. We have increasing price and a staircase higher of volume. That is bullish. Not only that, we have a higher weekly high. We're pushing off the 50 MA. We're set for a third week weekly candle close over the 50. We're over both averages. That is bullish for me if it holds, right? Again, big caveat there if it holds in the CPI tomorrow. So looking here to NYA, higher weekly high. Nice. So that's bullish too. Weekly higher high. Looking here to DIA, weekly higher high. And we got green volume here. It's pretty much green since October of last year when we, when we formed our bottom. Bullish. Looking to the next chart. Here we have the Russell. And this one is stinky. Small caps are not doing great. They're resting near support. We got a death cross. We're below both averages. But we mostly focus on the S&P. So the Russell is definitely soft. And there's 2,000 stocks inside of here. So it's a stock picker's market, as we've noted before. Moving forward to uh, what's this one here, XLK. It's going nowhere. It is down by 1% on the week. Full doji. As we noted, tech is going nowhere right now. XLF, financials rallying into earnings with what? A weekly higher high. That looks pretty good to me. Volume is still really red. So looking to see if we can actually get some bullish volume coming in here. Moving forward to uh, healthcare. What do we get? We got a weekly higher high and we got that bullish volume coming in. That is a check for the bulls. Moving forward, we got energy. What do we got? Inside bar, really close to last week's high. And we got a capitulation volume off the low. It is still red. We're still trending down as well. Moving forward to XLU, we got a, a hammer forming, a lower high just below the 50. Uh, looking to SMH, this one's soft. So chips and tech are down a little bit, but they are way off their relative highs. What is that? Sorry, way off the relative low. What does that mean? They're taking a breather here. They've been chugging for a while. I'm talking months. They're taking a breather. People are rotating into other names. Let's skip ARC because it's stinky. Uh, what do we got here? $15,736, $10, basically a double top here on the DAX. Moving forward to FXI, uh, it's basically a double top too. 3957, 3953, double top over the 50 MA. Emerging markets, weekly higher high over last week's high. Looks pretty bullish to me. Moving forward here to IAT or in, uh, this is regional banks. What are they? They're green on the week, not on a weekly higher high, but man, we're seeing regional banks stabilize. Could this, could this be it? Could we do for more upside? And then we got insurance ETFs, which also took a massive dive on SVB and the fallout from all of those regional banks failing. What do we got? Higher high. Long's not quite there, but we are back over our 50 moving average. So why does this all matter? Well, because if you're only looking at one or two charts, it might be like, well, Justin, like S&P like, hasn't formed a weekly higher high yet. No, it hasn't. Why? Because of tech. So we're set for the third weekly consecutive candle close over the 50 MA. We have an inside bar. We gap down pumped up. We defended the low. We're getting resistance at the high. So like tomorrow really matters. And I've laid out a very clear case for us to go higher. If, however, we lose the weekly low from last week at 405.68, what does that mean? It means we have a lower high and a lower low, and we're looking for a continuation down. Why? Because we're invalidating the short-term uptrend from our seasonality chart. And if we can't hold our 50 MA at 402, we're likely going lower. How much lower? For a gap fill here to 396. So what you have to think about is whether or not there is more upside or downside from where we are right now. I've tried my best to lay out the bull case and I'm positioned for the bull case. I would also note I've been crushing it so far this year. I'm not writing bareback into tomorrow though too. I have insurance, which means if we do decide to go down, I'm not gonna be surprised. I am prepared to go higher. And the fact the bears are so vocal they just cannot believe that we are going higher leads me to believe that there is more upside from here. But again, tell me in the, in the comment section if you think this is a sucker's rally, if you're in disbelief, or if you think we're going to get a fat fade. So with that said, I thank you so much for watching. And if you want to see my weekend notes about how I talked about there could be a bear trap in looking at one chart, 
That should now be queued up here on the left-hand side. If not, thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow.